Hello, my name is Joshua Calloway and I'm Technical Project Manager for QuickLearn. QuickLearn is the world leader in .NET, SharePoint, and BizTalk server training and consulting. Our instructors have taught more developers and administrators how to successfully build and manage BizTalk Enterprise solutions than any other company in the world. We offer public and private training and mentoring solutions worldwide. For more information about our courses and to view additional tutorials, please visit quicklearn.com. In this demonstration, you will see how to use UDDI binding key information to route an ESB message to a service using an itinerary with the UDDI3 resolver. You will examine the UDDI services portal to gather the appropriate service data, and you will use this service data to configure the UDDI3 resolver in an itinerary. Finally, you will verify the itinerary service by testing the resolver configuration. Let's start by taking a look at the itinerary designer. As you can see, we've already created an itinerary named UDDI3 Resolver Demo. And this itinerary contains a single itinerary service model element named UDDI Routing Service. We're going to use this itinerary service to route a message to a web service based on information retrieved from the UDDI3 registry. In order to keep this demonstration relatively short, we won't be creating and deploying an entire itinerary. Instead, we'll use the resolver validation functionality of the itinerary designer to verify that our service is configured correctly. We'll come back and configure the itinerary in a moment. Next, let's take a look at UDDI services. You can see we've opened the UDDI services portal to the published site. This site contains all the information about web services published to the UDDI registry. In this demonstration, we're going to route a message to the Purchase Order Submit Order Service. As we can see by looking at the Purchase Order Submit Order Service, this is an Azimex service. And if we look at its properties, we can see the complete endpoint for the service. I'll copy this value and open it in Notepad so we can see it clearly. The endpoint for this service is http localhost esb.canadianservices slash submitposervice.azimex. Now that we know what we'll be working with, let's go ahead and configure our itinerary. We'll select the UDDI routing service. And we'll go ahead and set the itinerary service extender property to messaging extender. Ordinarily, we'd set a container for the service, which is the pipeline or orchestration in which the service is executed. But because we won't actually be using this itinerary other than to validate the itinerary service and resolver, that's not going to be necessary. And of course, because we'll be using this itinerary to route messages, we'll set the service name property to microsoft.practices.esb.services.routing. Next, we'll add a resolver to the service and set the resolver implementation to UDDI3. Notice when we set the resolver implementation property, several related properties are made available to us. The first property we'll need to set is the Resolver Moniker. This property is used to set the moniker in the connection string. And as you can see here, it also sets the Server URL property. As a side note, the Server URL property is based on the information contained in the esb.config file. Let's take a look at the properties we can use to search the UDDI registry for information. First is the service key property, which returns all bindings for a specific service. When you use this property in your resolver, the itinerary service will resolve using the first binding key for the specified service. Next is the category search. Again, when you use this property in your resolver, your itinerary service will resolve using the first service and binding key returned in the search. Therefore, if you use this property in the resolver, you must make sure the search parameters are very unique. Finally, we have the binding key property, 
Using this property is the most specific method for retrieving service information from UDDI, and we'll use this property to configure our resolver. Back to the UDDI services portal, we'll retrieve the binding key for the endpoint of purchase order submit order service. To get the binding key, we'll go ahead and click More Details. When the Service Details window opens, you can see there are two keys listed. The version 2 key is a long, ugly GUID. However, the version 3 key is nice and easy to read. UDDI ESB Purchase Order Submit Order Service Binding. We'll go ahead and copy the version 3 key to the clipboard, close the details window, and we're ready to set our resolver property. I'll just paste the value into the binding key property, and we're ready to test our resolver configuration. As you can see in the output window, our resolver was tested successfully. We gathered from the UDDI registry all information required to send a message to the Purchase Order Submit Order service, including the action, the target namespace, the transport location or address of the service, and the transport type, among many other values. In this demonstration, you saw how to route ESB messages to a web service using data collected by the UDDI3 resolver.